I shall raise up for myself a faithful priest who will act in accord with my heart and my mind, says the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who are glorified in the Bishop St. Martin, both by his life and death, make new, we pray, the wonders of your grace in our hearts, that neither death nor life may separate us from your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Paul, a slave of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the faith of God's chosen ones and the recognition of religious truth in the hope of eternal life, that God, who does not lie, promised before time began, who indeed at the proper time revealed his word in the proclamation with which I was entrusted by the command of God our Savior, <clears throat> to Titus, my true child in our common faith, <clears throat> grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. For this reason, I left you in Crete, so that you might set right what remains to be done and appoint presbyters in every town as I directed you, on condition that a man be blameless, married only once, with believing children, who are not accused of licentiousness or rebelliousness. For as a bishop, for a bishop as God's steward must be blameless, not arrogant, not irritable, not a drunkard, not aggressive, nor greedy for sordid gain, but hospitable, a lover of goodness, temperate, just, holy, and self-controlled, holding fast to the true message is taught so that he will be able to exhort with sound doctrine and refute opponents. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. <clears throat> the Lord's are the earth in its fullness, the world and all those who dwell in it for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is in vain. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, Alleluia, 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Shine like lights in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause sin will inevitably occur, but woe well to the one through whom they occur. It would be better for him if a millstone were put around his neck and he be thrown into the sea than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. Be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he wrongs you seven times in one day and returns to you seven times saying, I am sorry, you should forgive him. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. The Gospel of the Lord. It's very fitting that today we honor St. Martin of Tours, that would be in France. He would have been born and lived around the fourth century in modern day Hungary. And of course, he was a soldier, as you all know, in the Roman army. Hence today, we pray for all the veterans out there for their generosity, their magnanimity, their fortitude in giving of their life for, their, for this beautiful nation that we are in. So, Miles Christi, soldier for Christ. That can be said of St. Martin of Tours. It can also be said of all of us and all of our students. <laughs> we are all called to be soldiers for Christ, to be miles Christi. Of course, the students, some of them, I overheard them saying before morning prayer that, why do we have school today? Well, it's because other schools may have today off, whereas we have school because as a Catholic school, we give plenty of days off. We have two weeks for, th for Easter, two weeks for Christmas and so forth. So the, it's all math, basically. You have to be at school for a certain number of, uh, number of days. I'm going to talk today, speak today about just two topics. The first will be scandal. Scandal, that which we hear from in the gospel reading. And then I presume the opposite virtue would be that of being edifying, edification. And I shall give examples of each. Scandal sometimes can be, can be misunderstood. There is instances when you are just shocked at the behavior of someone, and then there are instances when you are actually scandalized by the behavior of someone. So I'll just illustrate it by examples. That's usually the easiest. So I, my first example was that yesterday, Father Benedict Solomon, who was here, who was here for like two months, he contacted me and he wanted to meet with me. So he said, let's meet at the reptile show, the Repticon, <laughs> which is here in Costa Mesa over the weekend at the OC fairground. And he and I would always make a point of going to reptile shows whenever it's local. So it's just, we're very eccentric people as you can gather. So. If you, once we got there, we were looking at all the snakes and chameleons and geckos, but I ended up buying like toads and frogs 
and, um, and some tarantulas and a scorpion. Okay, those are arachnids and amphibians, but they were sold at the reptile show. So if you saw that, me buying all these things as if we don't have enough animals by the sister's convents, you would be kind of shocked, but you wouldn't be scandalized. To be scandalized is to be led into an action that is morally, well, to be led into an action. You, you would not be tempted to go out there to buy reptiles of your own. Okay, that would not be the case. Whereas scandal, when I was working for many years with high schoolers and going around all their retreats, they would always ask me, teenagers would always ask me, hey, Father, are you allowed to drink? To which I respond, well, I drink daily at Mass. But what they're thinking is, am I allowed to drink beer and to, uh, at places like parties and so forth? And I, I answered, of course I can drink. I mean, it's not morally sinful. So if I was in Italy, I would have no problem being my habit drinking a glass of wine. But here in the United States, in the American culture, I probably would never be seen in my habit drinking a beer in front of high schoolers because they would see that and that might scandalize them. And the word probably used would be they would not be able to discern properly. Hence, if they had a weakness for drinking at parties, they would say, well, Father Damien drinks, therefore we can drink. Okay? It's not logical, but that would be an example. So that's a long explanation of today's text about scandal. Now, when it comes to edification, to be edifying, I would use the example of the sisters. If you were at the 630 Mass, I highlight, highlighted them because there was a film crew from the Diocese of Orange that came and f basically filmed their day, recorded their day, and it's put out on YouTube. Just go home and type in a day in the life of, of a sister and it, it, through the Diocese of Orange. I guarantee you it will show up. It's very edifying because it shows them waking up early in the morning, punctuating the day with prayer, they came to Mass, you, some of you were filmed, and then their ministry with the students. So there they are out there teaching, being with the children, and that's very edifying. And then it shows them at recreation, playing the guitar and singing in their convent, and being, and the, what would you call that, the uh, skating. They were skating, free skating, that's what they were doing. And so you can watch all of that, but all of that, all the fun they have will only make sense because of the fact that they prioritize the Mass and the liturgy of the hours and the, their life of, of, of prayer. So once again, all that they do, the fun stuff, if it weren't not for the fact that they are women of prayer, then you call that a sorority, basically. Whereas in this case, everything they do is rooted in their life of prayer and a devotion to our Lord, to Our Lady, and the sacraments. So that would be an example of being edified. And so the students seeing that, rather than being scandalized, they are now edified. Edification is to construct an edifice, a building. So in this case, we're con constructing the church, figuratively speaking, in terms of in the formation of our children. So I will end by saying... May Christians, Catholics like ourselves, not scandalize the pagans or the seculars through our lack of forgiveness. There is nothing more scandalous for a critical, cynical, secular world when, when they see Christians, Catholics, being unforgiving of one another, harboring a grudge, speaking ill of others, and so forth. And may we instead edify seculars by being prompt to forgive the offenses that others may have inflicted upon us, whether it's perceived or actual. So through the intercession of St. Martin of Tours, may we go forth to be good soldiers for Christ, milis Christi, by forgiving one another. As servants, let us approach the Lord with patience, humbly representing our needs and intentions. 
For church leaders, may God, who has chosen them, keep them blameless and holy. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of our, our veterans, may God graciously watch over them in their service to their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who offer the gift of their time to this faith community, and those who are sick or hurting in any way, we pray for the good health of Barbara P Pietro and Susie Partita. May God give them strength in their moments of trials. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, marked with the sign of faith, we pray especially for the repose of the souls of James and Etta Sodavini, for whom this Mass is being offered. May they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Loving God, we bring our prayers before you with confidence that you will hear and answer them. Grant what we ask according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, so it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify these offerings, we pray, Lord God, which we joyfully present in honor of St. Martin, so that through them our life may always be directed, whether in tribulation or in prosperity. Through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Perhaps on the festival of St. Martin, you bid your church rejoice. So, too, you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Keep, teach, her to keep his, teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. 
He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant to us who have been restored by this sacrament of unity, O Lord, perfect harmony with your will in all things. And just as St. Martin submitted himself entirely to you, so we too may glory in being truly yours through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O presence of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, pass into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world and seek in the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Amen.